Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to integrate Google Login in Unity for iOS and Android apps. I have divided this video in three parts. In the first part, I am going to show you what the final product looks like. In second part, get yourself ready with doing the integration yourself. We will start with downloading and importing the required Unity packages. Then we will get the configuration files for iOS and Android from the Google console. Following that, we are going to do product setup and we will also have a look at what are the advanced options available. Once the project is set up, we will export the iOS and Android project and we will verify that it is imported properly. In the final section of this video, I'm gonna cover common errors, debugging, and where to report bugs if you found any. So let's begin with demo on iOS and Android devices. We will start with iOS. This is iPhone 6s which is running example scene which is shipped with our project. First we will call initialization method. Let's start with login. It will go to accounts.google.com to authorize. You can select an account based on options shown to you. Now we can fetch the full name, user ID or the user token, user photo URL. Now that the user is logged in, if you launch the application next time, we will be able to perform a silent login where the UI will not be shown to the user and user will be logged in automatically. Once you have done silent login for returning user, you will be able to use all the available functions. But once you log out, the silent login will not function anymore and you will have to ask user for login once again via UI. Now that we are done with iOS, let's move on to Android. I will be running the same example scene. Once again, I'm gonna initialize the module and start the login. It will ask me to choose an account and the login is successful. Now you can fetch user ID, user token, photo URL, same way you were able to do in iOS. Uh, access token is gonna be nil and you can read Google documents regarding why it is the case. If you log out, silent login is not gonna work anymore and you can see it here. Now we will run the app once again. Initialize the module and try a silent login and it is successful because the user was previously logged in. You should definitely read more about silent login from the Google documents because I'm not really an expert on how it works. What this module essentially does is exposes the interface. Usage is really up to you. Let's move on to more interesting part. How you can get it in your Unity project. Let's begin with creating a new Unity project. I'm gonna call it Awesome Game. Now since project is ready, I will jump to Asset Store and search for the module Google Sign In. Most probably you are in this video because you have already seen the module. So let's import it. Once import is done, let's expand the locomotion folder and open the example scene. It also contains a readme file which also contains the steps which I am narrating in this video. Uh, the current target is set PC, Mac and Linux. Let's switch it to iOS or Android. Alright, now we will get the second package which is required 
which is called Unity Jar Resolver. It is possible that you already have this in your Unity project via any other third party library like Firebase. You can confirm it by checking if you have a folder Play Services Resolver directly under your assets folder. What it does is brings dependencies from your Android SDK installation to your Unity project. It is also capable of downloading any required files depending on the setup that you have done. This is an open source project and you can read more about it in their GitHub page. Now let's import it. If you already have any of these files in your Unity project, you cannot have duplicate DLL files which are shown under editor. If you want to upgrade Play Services Resolver, which is already part of your Unity project via a third party module, refer to their GitHub page and the guide that they have given. Now that module is here, click anywhere on your file editor. Follow on screen instructions. Once the jars are resolved, you will be able to see multiple R files in your Android folder. Now these are all the files which are required for the Google login to function. You can locate these files in your Android SDK installation folder too. So you will be able to understand exactly the source of it. Now I'm gonna be a little lazy and just gonna search for it. All right, so you can see the second file, which is play services auth, and you can see the package where it is exactly located, and all the play services libraries and support libraries are, lo are located here. And the latest version that I have is 11.0.1. .1. One thing you should know is you should never have duplicate R files in your Unity project. This is the most common issue developers encounter uh, during their development, especially when they are importing another module. So just make sure by searching a couple of things to that you do not have any duplicate R files. You can either do it from Unity editor by searching for common search phrases, or you can also do it from your operating system search in assets folder. Now let's have a look at editor scripts so that you can troubleshoot any versioning issues which you face with play services library. So as you can see, we have only specified play services auth and app compared v7 for Google login to work and all the remaining R files that you see are the dependencies which gets pulled because of these. Uh, you can change this version latest to whatever version that you want to use. Uh, because many times you might have alpha versions of latest Android SDKs, but that might not be a suitable option for production. Now, as you can also see that we use Google slash sign in pod for iOS project. The second editor script is for configuring iOS project and I'm leaving it up to you to explore. In next step, we will be getting configuration files to be used in our project. Now I will be creating a fresh project in Google console. If you already have a project, you can refer to Google documentation if you should be following a different method. So first I'm creating configuration for iOS and I'm going to name this app awesome game. I'm specifying a bundle ID which I'm planning to use with my application. All right, so now I'm going to enable Google sign in. Once it is done, you can close it and generate your configuration file. Now the configuration file is ready. You can download it. Now iOS configuration file has an extension plist. Now that we are done with iOS, let's do it for Android.
Now, since I already have my project on iOS, I'm just going to select it from dropdown instead of creating a new project. But I do not have the package name for Android. So I'm going to register the same package name once again. Now, few of you might have different package names for iOS and Android. Okay, so um, Android has an additional step that you have to provide your signing certificate SHA-1 and you can follow the link on how do I find my SHA-1 and provide it here. Now, I will not be providing any guide on that. It is up to you to figure out how to get it right. Once you have provided your SHA-1 details, you can enable Google sign-in and download Google services configuration file from the next screen. Once you have generated and downloaded this file, let's have a look at our Google project. Now what it has, it provides a couple of API keys and these are the OAuth clients that we have created just now. One is for Android and another one is for iOS. A web client is automatically created Going forward, we are going to make use of this web client to initialize Google sign-in module because for Android, you need both Android and web client, whereas for iOS, you only need an iOS client. Now that we have downloaded configuration files for iOS and Android, let's place it under assets folder directly. Now, Do not put these files in any subfolder, otherwise editor scripts might break. And if you are planning to put it in any subfolder, I would advise you to change editor script. But this is a task that you will have to take up yourself. So one more step required and we are all set to run it. Let's have a look at the example scene. And you can see like in canvas, I have attached uh, LC Google sign in example script. You can open this script and here you will have to uh, set the web client ID for this to function. Once you have set the web client ID, you can disable this warning because it is no longer necessary. We have not provided any editor support to test this project, so you have to run it on your iOS or Android device. But you can have a look at the example scene and run it on a Unity editor to see what happens. When you click manual initialize, an object is created which will be used to communicate between the native libraries and the C-sharp code. If you are following along and creating a new project, make sure you have set up your bundle identifier the signing keys and added this scene to your build settings. Otherwise, you're going to get unwanted errors. At last, I'm going to show you how to verify that your iOS project build is correct. It is my advice that before you run it on Android, you verify that it works on iOS because it is relatively lot simpler and the chances of error is very low. Uh, you will be able to see a pod file generated and it should have at least Google slash sign in added to your Unity target. Second thing that you want to ensure that your plist has the URL schema available. Now we add two URL schemas. One is by the name Google and another one is LC Google. Google contains reverse client ID for iOS whereas LC Google contains your bundle identifier as you can verify from your Google console. This brings us to the final few minutes where I am going to open the readme.md file which I have given with the project and you can go through it to see what are the common errors that you might face and how to resolve it. Thank you for watching with this video. If you have any doubts or you are looking for support, you can write to us at support at the rate of locomotion.co.in. 
do like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay connected to us and see the games that we are doing also share your games in the comments area so we will come to know the games which are powered by our unity package thank you